Not all distribu normal distributions have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. In any situation where we have a mean that's different than zero or a standard deviation that's different than one, so only one of those two things has to be true, then what we have is a non-standard normal distribution. For instance, what we have pictured here is a normal distribution with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 25. Now we can see that, that distribution is centered at 100, still unimodal, still symmetric. It's just been shifted along the x-axis to now be centered at this new mean. And then as our standard deviation gets larger or smaller, the shape, the width of this distribution will expand or contract. All of the properties we've already established still apply. For instance, the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. But what changes is determining where those points occur because we can't just count in ones and twos. Now we have to determine how far a one standard deviation is above or below. So if we start with our mean of 100 and subtract 25, we get a value of 75. That tells us that one standard deviation below our mean occurs at 75 and one standard deviation above our mean occurs at 125. And just like we saw with the standard normal distribution, 68% of all data would occur between 75 and 125 for this distribution. And then we can continue to count in intervals of 25 to find the second standard deviation, third standard deviation, and so on. We can also take any data point in this distribution and convert it to what's referred to as a z-score. Converting values to a z-score just means more or less that we're converting everything to a standard normal distribution. And the formula here is to take your data value, whichever number we want to convert, subtract the mean, and then divide by the standard deviation. For instance, we could take our value of 75, which we found to be one standard deviation below the mean. We could subtract the mean from that and then divide by 25 to get negative 25 over 25 is equal to negative 1 which again is exactly how many standard deviations we are away from the mean. So finding a z-score just converts all of our values into a standard normal distribution and whatever number we get, that number is telling us how many standard deviations away we are from the mean. It's possible we could get a whole number like negative one or positive two. We could also get decimal values, but then just helps us determine again in standard deviations, how far that data value is away from the mean.